financial astrology spaces event. Um, and I'm going to, you know, I am Crypto Jarmus here at Astro Crypto Guru. So, uh, yeah, so let's talk about what's going on right now uh, for uh, just in the general astrology picture. I mean, um, just this weekend, I mean, Saturn's going to sex out Bitcoin Sun in the natal chart. We use that. We use a combination, or I personally use a combination of looking at the kind of mundane astrological picture, transits, ingresses, retrogrades, alignments, aspect alignments, and then we also look at the Bitcoin inception chart. We kind of put those two things together. Uh, we also look at the Bitcoin progress chart, which is important. So first of all, let's just say, you know, one thing, which is we've got four bullish sort of big picture things that are going on, you know, for crypto this year. Number one is the dragon year. Dragon year, generally speaking, is bullish. We've talked about this in the last uh, spaces. And by the way, in the last spaces, I accurately predicted the Bitcoin uh, rally top, which was around, we said it was going to be around March 10th, 11th, or 12th. Uh, exactly where it came in. And then we've had this pullback. We also pred I predicted that there was going to be a pullback for a couple weeks. And uh, now we're in the sideways consolidation pattern. So first of all, we got that right last time. We predicted the top. We predicted the pullback. But big picture, Dragon Year is, uh, we looked at the last six Dragon Years. Four out of six were bullish for the S&P 500. One was flat and only one was bearish. So Dragon Years lean bullish. Previous Dragon Year for Bitcoin 2012 was very, very good. Uh, we had uh, triple digit gains for Bitcoin in the only one previous dragon year in the Bitcoin life cycle. Um, also, Bitcoin is a rat. Rats do well in the dragon year. So we have that uh, information in our analysis as well. Pluto and Aquarius, big picture for 2024. This has been bullish for AI, most bullish for AI and crypto. And that continues pretty much throughout the rest of the year. Of course, Pluto does go back into Capricorn for like a few weeks, but I'm not even really thinking that's going to matter that much. The upcoming Jupiter-Uranus conjunction on April 20th. Also, Mars is sextiling the Jupiter. I don't know if anybody's really said this, but Mars is going to sextile the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction the day before on April 19th and 20th. This is going to be mega bullish for crypto and AI, and all sorts of big tech, I think, is going to do, do well. The other one we've talked about is the Bitcoin progressed sun. This is going to be conjunct the Bitcoin natal Jupiter, and I'm going to tweet this out, um, and this is going to be, the Bitcoin progress sun is going to be conjunct the Bitcoin natal Jupiter, which is a point of expansion, good fortune, confidence, optimism, and success, um, and that's going to be in effect really all year as well, so uh, we've got four sort of big picture bullish aspects, uh, you know, basically for, for Bitcoin. Um, and for crypto markets. Okay, now we are going into a tough kind of period in April, right? Mercury is going to go retrograde on April 1st. Uh, we've got this very ugly looking eclipse on April 8th. The eclipse is exactly conjunct Chiron. Um, and two days later, we have the malefic Mars Saturn conjunction, uh, which usually kind of puts the brakes on markets to some degree. However, um, the Bitcoin natal chart, it's just all, there's no really negative configuration. So we don't think there's anything major to worry about. Of course, we could see some chop. We could see some volatility. We could see some pullbacks in this period up to April 10th. Mars-Saturn conjunction, we call that the conjunction of the malefics. We talked about this in the last basis. It's definitely concerning. And it could slow things down for a bit. However, the, actually the Bitcoin natal aspect picture, transit pictures, is not too bad during that period. You know, so I think it's, it's not going to be terrible uh, for, for Bitcoin. Then, you know, this is leading up to that April 20th Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, one of the big events of the year. And again, massively bullish for crypto, for AI, for technological breakthroughs and, all, and technological innovations. Um, Uranus is the modern ruler of Aquarius, and this is also going to strengthen the Pluto and Aquarius effect as well. Um, so I think we really just have to get through this sort of period, really, of the next two to three weeks, you know, going into that April 10th. I'm just keeping my expectations low through April 10th. You know, Bitcoin's been surprising all year to the upside. 
for the last basically, what, 14, 16 months. So, you know, like, it's surprising. It's been, you know, I thought this eclipse, this March 25th eclipse, was going to knock Bitcoin down a little bit. It didn't happen. Rallied into the eclipse. So, uh, you know, be prepared for a surprise to the upside. But I really think the picture actually improves after April 10th. That's sort of the key, you know, after the April 8th, 10th period, um, uh, that's when I think that, uh, you know, the breaks kind of come off. And then we're going into that very exuberant, um, you know, Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. May, May looks fantastic. I mean, uh, you know, Venus goes into its home sign Taurus. That's a wealth sign configuration. Mars goes into its home sign Aries. You get Venus and Mars in domicile with dignity by rulership in their home signs. Mars and Aries, great confidence. We could see some great confidence in them in the stocks and crypto markets. Uh, the May 7th new moon at 18 degrees Taurus, it's conjunct Jupiter Uranus conjunction. So also we'll emphasize that Jupiter Uranus conjunction again. May 17th through the 19th, Jupiter Kazemi. Jupiter is going to be conjunct the sun for uh, much of May, and that's an exuberant. I mean, okay, Jupiter will be combust, but the sun will be uh, get that blessing from Jupiter. So, uh, and, and especially Jupiter Kazemi. And then we go into May uh, May 23rd. Uh, you get the Venus Jupiter conjunction in Taurus, also a super wealth configuration. And that's going to sextile Neptune. I mean, May is just looking really extraordinary uh, for the markets. By the way, that is a very special alignment in the Bitcoin inception chart. Let me just explain this for a second. Jupiter Uranus, no, sorry, uh, Venus Jupiter conjunction, the, the, conjun the annual conjunction of the benefics is, uh, again, May 23rd. At 28-29 Taurus, that's going to sextile Neptune. That is a euphoric aspect. Okay, and both of those are going to make a trine and a sextile to the Bitcoin natal inception Jupiter and the Bitcoin progress sun. So this has three different levels. Okay, the mundane aspects, the Bitcoin inception chart, and the Bitcoin progress chart. It's all super exuberant, euphoric, bullish post having here at the end of at the end of uh, May okay then we go into June and we get a very nice Venus Kazemi effect that is actually a pretty long one it lasts for almost a week and not only that we have an extremely rare new moon conjunct Venus Kazemi I think it's at 1516 Gemini and and Jupiter will be trining, Jupiter and Gemini will be trining Pluto and Aquarius. This is all in the first week of June. So guys, that I think is a possible top signal. That combination of Jupiter trining Pluto and Venus, Kazemi, New Moon, and Gemini, uh, that is a very exuberant combination, right? So basically between May 17th, Jupiter, Kazemi, May 23rd, Venus, uh, Jupiter conjunction, uh, June, first week of June, uh, Jupiter, Trine, Pluto, and Venus, Kazemi. That could be a kind of a blow-off top area, potentially. Um, you know, plus or minus a week or two here. They're not, you know, exact is always going to be a little bit hard to nail. There could be some other smaller factors. Uh... So that's an area, that first half of June is an area that, you know, I'm, I'm very bullish up until that first two, week, two weeks of June. Um, and then I think, you know, things could cool off. I also think this whole period is going to be bullish for altcoins like Solana, Injective, Pepe. I think meme coins like Pepe, Shiba, uh, you know, could do well. Uh, Link, Ethereum, I think these are all uh, going to do very well. Astrologically, uh, we're going to talk about this in my in my Saturday uh, quarter two webinar. But uh, those are all uh, Solana, Injective, uh, Render, Pepe, Link, Ethereum. I think these all do very well. Now, once we get into the second half of June, I become much much more concerned because we've got a transiting Saturn factor uh, that is that is challenging. Uh, it makes a transit conjunction to the Bitcoin natal Uranus and 
transit Saturn conjunctions in the Bitcoin inception chart historically have like a 75 to 80% bearish hit rate. Also, we've got, we've got Mars is going to conjunct Uranus in July. Um, another factor that could be problematic for crypto. Um, it's also conjunct Algol, the fixed star. Very, very unfavorable. Malif this is a very unfavorable malefic combination. Mars, Uranus, Algol at 26 Taurus in, in July. I can't remember the exact date. But um, actually, no, it's July 15th, 14, 14, 15, 16. Now we get into August and things are not looking good in August. Either you've got this massive sort of T-square, uh, the, the, you know, Jupiter, Saturn, which are now in a lovely sextile. They've been this whole year. They're going to go into a square. Also, Venus is going to square Mars at the same time in this weird T-square configuration. Uh, so, so basically, the bottom line is this. I think we're bullish for the next 10 to 12 weeks into June. I think this is an amazing wealth opportunity here uh, for cryptocurrencies. I think we're going to see explosive moves in the cryptocurrency markets over the next 8 to 10, 12 weeks, especially in May, from late April to the first half of June. And then I would become extremely concerned and I would be applying some really considerable risk management, taking profits, moving up stop losses, reducing risk, uh, locking in gains if you have them, and uh, you know taking some money off the table there and then wait and see how July and August kind of play out. Same thing for stocks, especially big high-flying AI stocks. Uh, probably going to be a summer uh, slowdown again, as we've seen the last uh, couple of years, actually. So that's kind of um, that's kind of my view right now on things. Um, Short-term turbulence going into the April eighth, April tenth period, and then a very exuberant bullish kind of lineup from late April through the first half of of June, and then and then we worry. Uh, so that's kind of my that's kind of my view. That's what I'm seeing, and that's um, how I'm going to sort of uh, I'm going to trade that view uh, for now. And then you know, obviously we're, we'll update in April. You know, if it was so easy, we could just make a three month thing and only like put out one forecast and never have to update or change, make any changes. Right? That would be great, but that's not how it works. Uh, markets, you know, sometimes will go different than we expect, and, and we have to uh, reconfigure our analysis. So, of course, none of this is financial advice, guys. Uh, these are just some ideas. You know, do your own research. Uh, we don't tell you how to manage your money or how to trade. We're just giving you the astrological information that we have. So, okay, guys. Uh, next up, we're going to have uh, Mr. Marsilio here, and... He's going to tell us if he agrees with my analysis or not, and also see what he is saying. Marcelio, are you there? Hey there. Uh, thanks for having me again, and thanks to everybody who, for joining in. Um, can everybody hear me okay? Yep. Okay, awesome. So first, I want to get a bit of a total shout out to Damas, because he said we nailed the top, but what he really meant was... Uh, him, he, he did a great job on getting the top window, the crypto top window, like one day away, and that was weeks in advance. So that's just amazing work. Thanks, man. Um, I appreciate the shout out. Yeah, for sure. Totally well deserved. And um, also, I, I'm going to try and keep this big picture and and less astro lingo. You know, we we both came into the year say, saying AI and crypto cryptos, and that's totally played out. And, you know, exactly where the top came in, you, you got it in the last space. I was expecting a little more strength into quarter end, which is played out in indexes mostly. Um, so in terms of what's next, uh, markets have had a massive run. And what makes the most sense technically and astrologically is a sideways range possible mile pullback. Exactly what it's going to be, you know. I don't have high confidence here, and I'll say a little bit more about that soon. Um, I have a certain favored scenario, but I would say there are two cycles in play now that, in my experience, can be a little tricky. I think node moves can be tricky. 
and eclipses can be tricky, and also Mercury retrograde likes to even fool us astrologers. It, <laughs> it, it might not be so bearish. Uh, and um, so for this reason, you know, I try and stay flexible. And, and incorporate technicals into the timing view. I mean, I always do that, not just when I don't have a high confidence move. And right now, the levels that matter for cryptos um, from in my technical work, uh, Bitcoin 70K, it's not just a round number, it's a half year pivot level. And then Ethereum equivalent is 3573. They're both stuck under these levels. Um, I use the pivots a lot in my work. These are half year pivots. And... Um, they're actually something um, I've been using for a long time. They're not immediately available on TradingView, but I'm working on uh, sharing a script that I tweaked uh, that to include the half year as an option. So if you're interested in that, you can uh, send, you can comment on the the Bitcoin and Ethereum charts that are on my profile right now if you're interested in that because it'll be an invite only script. Uh, in any case. Damas and I totally line up on the next high confidence move, which it com we completely agree, probably for similar reasons, that all coins and in, in indexes, uh, small caps are going to have are going to be the biggest opportunity of the second quarter, and uh, getting on top of it now and watching for the leaders could be a huge opportunity, and that might be the next like really big money opportunity of this year because we also agree that later in the year gets a little more complicated and more likely to have some more significant trouble. So just as we were both bullish on AI and crypto coming into this year from December, um, we're both bullish alts and I'm adding small caps uh, and I find them quite correlated in the second quarter. That's going to be it. That's the high confidence. In between now and then, I have preferred scenario uh, in terms of the next like couple weeks, but probably some sideways choppy action is more likely than not. Um, and then I think the last thing I want to include, since there probably is some astrofluent people on the call, is that one of the things I do with the astro data, which I, I look at quite a lot of historical data using uh, Tableau, uh, some of which I put up for free for everybody on my Tableau public page, um, I really like to segment the astro data into bull and bear environments. And often, before I did this, I would look at something and come to a certain conclusion. And, but then once segmented the data into bull and bear environments, just using a simple daily 200 moving average, a lot looked quite different. And in the last space, not, not to knock on SJ while he's not here, not at all, but uh, we mentioned how Mars and Pisces is the worst time for Bitcoin. And that is totally true. I use data from 2015 to current. It totally is. Except if you segment the data into bull and bear environments, Mars and Pisces in the bull markets only data, it's just the fourth week of sign. So not terrible. It's completely different conclusion. And um, bear markets just act differently than bull markets, which often, um, you know, I guess cryptos probably have a lot more sudden rallies and then some periods of sideways or, or bigger pullbacks. But in equities, bull markets are often, I mean, what we're seeing now is historically extremely rare. Bull markets are usually more quiet, plodding up, and the bear markets are the ferocious, you know, wild moves, fast drops, squeezes, another drop, then recovery, and, and bulls are just a little bit more calm. So in these different environments, the planet energies act differently. And, um, you know, even um, for cryptos, Mercury retrograde is often, is actually bullish in bull markets, but terrible in bear markets. So if you're interested in that, you can check out my profile. I just put up a few charts. And I think... I think I'll leave it at this. Um, I'll take, we'll take questions later. Hey, I just wanted to throw one other thing in there, I, uh, which I just wanted to mention in terms of the uh, bull and bear market uh, scenario. You know, like, I actually was a little too bearish on this March 25th eclipse. I really thought Bitcoin was going to go down 
we often see Bitcoin make a bottom around full, full moons, and this eclipse was very poorly positioned for Bitcoin, uh, and and it went up, <laughs> it went up, and it broke 70k. Uh, so that gives you some information, right? Even though the sort of the prediction was off, it's like uh, even under a sort of unfavorable position eclipse, uh, you know, the market still maintained that 60K support level and managed to rally. So that's just to me really another bullish factor. Now, eclipses are tricky. The timing can be with several weeks. Uh, we're seeing a pullback now, you know, uh, testing some support levels. But yeah, that was just another... Another bullish factor really was that the eclipse didn't really jump it. Uh, you know, I was thinking there was a possibility of sub 60 on that eclipse and it just totally didn't happen. So I had to like FOMO back in uh, myself over the weekend. Um, okay, guys, uh, uh, Gianni uh, DePochi uh, is up next. And some of you, he's not super active on X with the financial stuff. Uh, so some of you may or may not know him, but he's been working with Ray Merriman for uh, several years, and uh, he's one of Ray's top disciples, and uh, he can give us kind of the view of uh, himself and, and maybe share some thoughts of what Ray is, is thinking as well. Um, so welcome to the show, uh, Gianni. Great, man. Great to, great to have you on. Hey, I'm sorry, Gianni, I got to interrupt you for a minute here because I'm getting some messages that uh, the audience can't hear you. Um, that's what I got three messages that saying that the audience can't hear you. I can hear you fine. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I can hear you just fine. Uh, is anybody else? Uh, yeah, I've got four messages, five messages, complete silence on our end. Um, so another, another space is glitch. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, you, can you, like, let me see. Um, uh, okay. Uh, I don't know what we should do here, but. Yeah, I've got tons, yeah, tons of messages coming in. Uh, 
Yeah, let's try that. Let's try that, yeah. Okay, uh, okay, guys, uh, we're testing uh, Gianni just to test your mic test, a little test. bit. Man, I just I just ranted, too. I'm not going to be able to repeat that. Like, I just... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you're going to have to repeat that entire, entire thing. But let's just make sure, um, just, just introduce yourself again and tell us a little bit about your background and what... Just let's just do a test on sure. that. Sure, okay, so this is Gianni DePoche. I have been uh, trading for... Uh, over 12 years, been in the traditional financial world. I've uh, been working with Ray Merriman now uh, for several years, run his trading academy for him. I've uh, been analyzing uh, with Ray for quite some time. So uh, it seems like, okay, I, I'm getting thumbs up um, I'm, on my phone here. So it seems like people can uh, hear me. So I'm going to okay. try to give you right. a, uh, <laughs> a short recap of everything that I just shared. <laughs> I, I, I started out um, pretty strong. So um, I start off by saying that I generally agree with the, the bullish nature of, um, of crypto with, uh, in alignment with what uh, uh, Robert and Marsilio said. Uh, but I'm not entirely convinced that the downside risks in the immediate term are, uh, are complete. So if we do break support in crypto, if we do drop uh, below $60,000 in Bitcoin, I think there's a tremendous buying opportunity coming. Uh, in the month of April, growing into Jupiter conjunct Uranus. And if we fall into the fifty to $55,000 level, I think you need to back up the truck and get long. Because I do think that crypto will, and when I say crypto, I mean Bitcoin in this case, I think it will eventually rally uh, into the $110,000, $120,000 area. That may be the final uh, hurrah. So um, and it com when it comes to stocks, I'm still bullish as well. Um, I would like to see the S&P rally as high as 5,800, 6,000. Uh, but at some point this year, we are cyclically due for a 15 to 25% pullback. Now, coming into this year, markets were expecting the Federal Reserve to cut interest rates uh, 7% and start their rate cuts as soon as March. That obviously did not happen because we just passed the March meeting. Now we're looking at three rate cuts, but I think that's representative of Jupiter square Saturn which is a three-square passage aspect that starts in August. You have the second aspect in December, and then the final one is going to be in June of 2025. And so I think that reflects the bind that the Federal Reserve is in right now because Jupiter is expansionary, Saturn is contractionary with respect to monetary policy. And so there's been all these expectations that the Fed was going to cut, markets have been rallying based off that, and now they keep pushing back the envelope because the economy is stronger than expected, yet inflationary pressures are remaining uh, stubbornly high. So, you know, I am kind of, a, you know, uh, I trade futures. I'm in the currency market. I'm in the bond market. I, I actually think that bonds could rally a little bit. And the reason why I'm bringing that up to begin with is because that, that matters quite a bit to what we're going to see in terms of strength in stocks and, you know, what type of opportunities there are in the equity space. So, we actually started aggressively buying precious metals uh, a couple weeks uh, ago, and I'm still a precious metal bull. Uh, gold did hit a new all-time high recently. I think that silver could hit 35 bucks an ounce this year. Will it outperform crypto? No. But since Robert and Marcelio <laughs> did such a good job explaining that already, I'm trying to give you some other uh, things to look at, especially from an uh, astrological standpoint. So... Um, another interesting thing that I'm watching uh, in the currency market is, is what's going on with the dollar and the Japanese yen. I think that for, that, for those of you that don't know, you know Japan has been very uh, much at the tip of the spear with uh, aggressive and experimental monetary policy. And right now what you have is the dollar against the Japanese yen trading at a level that last year saw the Bank of Japan intervene and try to uh, prevent uh, a further decline in their currency value. And just a couple of weeks ago, you had the Bank of Japan come out and say, we're going we're gonna to drop these negative interest rates. And I don't think the market believes them. And what's interesting is if you pull up a natal chart of the Bank of Japan, 
Uh, and you can actually find the date on the Bank of Japan website. It's October 10th, 1882. So this upcoming Jupiter-Uranus conjunction um, is at 21 Taurus. It's going to be conjunct uh, the natal Neptune of the Bank of Japan uh, chart opposite the North Node in Scorpio, trine Uranus, and Moon. Um, so pretty pretty powerful stuff, uh, I think, especially when it comes to the Node, because you know we have the, the, the eclipses um, you know, that are not in the sign of Scorpio, but uh, occurring at a similar time you know, within a month apart, but, uh, having that Jupiter Uranus conjunction opposite the node, uh, for the bank of Japan in the sign of Scorpio, a, a sign that is obviously important with respect to debt and, and interest rates and stuff like that. We could actually see the bank of Japan buckle and, and finally abandon their, you know, very experimental monetary policy. And once upon a time, whenever you saw the Japanese Yen rally, it turned into a risk off situation for markets. And I think, you know, that could be a prelude for some potential volatility. Like I said, I think stocks go higher, but the probability of a 15 to 25% pullback this year is elevated. Now, when I say that, I'm not talking about this month or next month. I'm talking about in all likelihood later out this fall, uh, maybe even closer to the election. So that's what's on my radar right now. I don't know how much more time I have since I, you know, had to back up and, and start over. <laughs> But um, if there's any questions on that, uh, I'm, I'm happy to elaborate further. But I want to make sure Margot has uh, enough time to to share her her piece. Yeah, you're 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 good, man. If there's anything else, you you've got a few minutes if you want to add anything else. Yeah. So I mean, just with um, you know, the the Jupiter Saturn square, what I'm looking at from a geocosmic standpoint, it's pretty interesting. Um, I think each of those squares are going to be distinct and different from one another. So for the first one, you have Saturn being retrograde. Uh, Jupiter direct. The second one, Jupiter is retrograde. Saturn is direct. But then in the third, what you have is actually Jupiter and Saturn in different signs. So Jupiter is going to be in Gemini for the first two. Saturn is going to be in Pisces for the first two squares. For the third one, they're changing signs. Um, Jupiter is going to be in Cancer, Saturn in Aries. Jupiter and Cancer interests me from a real estate perspective um, because, again, the Fed's going to be messing with interest rates during this time. And I think rates could fall into summer as of right now. Um, but by the time we go into next year, keep in mind that if the Fed's lowering interest rates, it means that they're adding money back to the money supply. So I think inflation could come back um, at some point. And then maybe by the third and final square, the Fed's forced to pivot again and start raising interest rates. So all in all, I think this is good for stocks uh, altogether. Uh, but I do want to back up real quick and talk about Jupiter and Gemini in terms of some opportunities um, in the uh, stock market. You know, Jupiter and Gemini, keep an eye on uh, communications stocks. So communications, XLC is the ETF, a really important stock market sector. You know, you have big names like Netflix, Google, and Meta that are all part of the XLC ETF. And, you know, I, I'm a trader that pursues outperformance, so I want to be along the strongest stocks in the strongest sectors. Jupiter has a tendency to increase demand uh, of uh, stocks or sectors in, that are ruled by the sign that is transiting. So keep an eye on those types of stocks to media companies, education companies, um, things that are ruled by Gemini. You know, I think Disney completed a significant bottom, for example. But look at some of these media companies, uh, entertainment venues, um, stuff like that, uh, when it comes to communications, kind of take a deep dive into that sector and see if there's any nice technical setups, because I think once Jupiter goes into Gemini, you could really start to see perhaps even communications outperform technology. And I got to admit, I'm not really a fan when technology is not the top performing sector, but communications is a name that, um, or a sector, I should say, that I wouldn't mind seeing outperform just because of the big names that are uh, in that space. Oh, and by the way, I, I'm pretty bullish Apple right now, as long as it doesn't take out that low from October. So that that's uh, an individual stock that I think has some nice opportunities too. <laughs> nice. Thanks for that analysis. Um, yeah. Also, that's the key. That's a good point. Jupiter and Gemini. I also think maybe like uh, Tesla, we could see a nice rebound in Tesla at that time uh, for tra transportation EVs. Yeah. Maybe having a rebound. Uh, uh, especially with the trying to, to Pluto and Aquarius. Uh, so yeah, like maybe there'll be some big breakthrough in like phone, uh, smartphone, AI tech, 
to look at uh, some some things like that too. Yeah. Uh, but that was also a good point. I mean, uh, thanks for providing a little bit more bearish. I mean, we tend to get overly bullish on Bitcoin sometimes, and uh, I appreciate. I mean, you know, I'm going to give you a little pushback on that. I mean, I think those. I'd love to see Bitcoin down at fifty five thousand. I don't think it's going to happen. It's just been surprising to the upside all year. The bearish scenarios just have failed to play out. Uh, I'm looking at uh, the 50-day moving average right now, the simple moving average. It's at 60,100. That's kind of my worst case uh, support level. Yeah. Personally, I don't see it breaking down there, but it's Bitcoin. Anything can happen. Uh, there is a Mercury retrograde. There is a Mars Saturn conjunction. There could be some turbulence in the markets. Uh, I agree with you that if Bitcoin did hit 50,000 or 55, it would be a back up the truck moment. Yeah. I was thinking maybe we would see that on the eclipse, but there's still one more eclipse right. to go. Uh, so. and it's in April, <laughs> and, and our timing models are looking for a low in April, so I'd like to see that happen. But remember, I. If I sound bearish on Bitcoin, it's very contextual and very short term. No, no, short yeah. term. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 you're, you're talking to go to 100, 10, 120. <laughs> so essentially, there's really no bearish scenario on Bitcoin right now. Right. What we're all talking about is a buying opportunity in a bull market. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, looking at the chart, which I'm going to post right now, we've got a long sideways consolidation pattern. My bias is that's going to continue and we're not going to see a big dump. We're going to see this choppy sideways consolidation before the next big move up to 80, 90, 100,000. Uh, that's kind of my, my current bias. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, we've got a little dueling uh, scenarios here. So that's yeah, good. Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay. Uh, Margo, uh, are you ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready to go. Thank you, Damas. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Margo Amala. Um, I'm super excited to be here. This is actually my first ever live stream, so I'm looking forward to sharing some ideas. Um, I am. Just give us a little background about yourself, yeah, if you yeah, could. yeah. That's what I. Um, so I'm primarily a day trader and a swing trader, and that's the lens that I scope the market with. Um, I have a strong focus on the effect of planetary movements and cycles. Um, I'm always on the hunt for reliable patterns that back test well. Um, so that's kind of the foundation of the newsletter that I launched um, last fall. comes out bi-weekly, and in that newsletter, I'm identifying um, patterns that are tradable on a week-by-week -week basis. Um, so I have found that heliocentric planetary positions, sign transits, and aspects have a lot of confluence with pivots and moves in the financial market. So I spend a lot of time finding... Um, measurements and harmonics related to pivots and greater than 1.5 standard deviation moves so that I can position myself and and help other people kind of find the places in the market where it's likely that we're going to change directions and then make a big move. Um, so I use the time trade software, um, which has been pretty instrumental in my work. And if anybody here doesn't follow time trades on X, I suggest everybody gives him a follow. His work is his uh, software is pretty um, pretty outstanding, really, and the innovation that goes on with that. Um, it uses AI and machine learning um, to help generate probabilities, uh, which helps with shortcutting the work a little bit. Um, what I did for today is I focused on some setups that I'm looking at in April um, through a slightly different lens because what everybody here has been talking about so far is geocentric astrology and um, setups and I think geocentric setups are really important, and I look at those too, but I thought something that would be really unique that I could share today is um, the heliocentric perspective. Um, so from the heliocentric perspective in the financial markets, I find that uh, heliocentric conjunctions are one of the most powerful aspects. Um, and this month we have three primary heliocentric conjunctions happening. Um, the first one will occur on April 6th. And that is heliocentric Venus conjunct Saturn. So I did a little bit of backtesting on that in the markets, and I'm actually going to uh, drop these in. Um, I'm going to drop these in the Twitter feed right now. Let's see. There we go. I'm posting that one right now. So uh, basically, heliocentric Venus conjunct Saturn has a very high correlation to non-directional pivots in the daily chart and the weekly chart. So if you're a day trader, um, you can look for a pivot within a one-day orb, and that will play out for 
two to five days. Um, if you're a swing trader and you're looking for longer term entries, typically the um, heliocentric Venus conjunct Saturn has a one week orb and it does have a high correlation with um, pivots that take that carry on through through several weeks. Um, what's also interesting about this conjunction is that it's not only conjunct longitudinally, it's also conjunct on the declination level. And so I find that when conjunctions occur um, at di on different planes that they tend to be a little bit more powerful. Um, so the next one is on the 11th of April. And that one is actually could be looked at from either the geocentric perspective or the heliocentric perspective because that one is actually just, it's the Mercury-Sun inferior conjunction, which equates out in heliocentric astrology to Mercury conjunct Earth. Um, in heliocentric astrology, you're just kind of flipping the perspective that you're looking from. So, um, in, whereas in geocentric astrology, we're looking at everything from Earth. Um, when we look at everything from the sun, we see the Earth then. Um, and the Earth is actually a planet that we track. And so, whereas from Earth, you have Mercury conjunct the sun. From the sun, you have Mercury conjunct the Earth. So... Um, that one is one that I actually, uh, the, the, that, that particular conjunction, the Mercury-Sun inferior conjunction, um, in some markets has really predictable patterns that you can trade, uh, specifically in the gold market. Um, if you go into the gold market and you go to the moment in time when um, Mercury is conjunct the Sun and you lay a horizontal price line um, at that moment in time, and then you leave those out, you track them, you label them, and you track them over a long period of time. What I've found is that in the gold market, price comes back to that price line sometimes over and over again, but at least once between the inferior conjunction and the superior conjunction of, from, from the geocentric perspective of the sun and mercury, or you could flip it around. But it, it, each instrument's a little bit different, but gold is one that has a really reliable pattern with that. So that's something that you could play around with if you're a day or swing trader, um, and then positioning yourself around that. Um, then on the 17th of April, we have the heliocentric Venus conjunct Neptune. And uh, that is also another conjunction that is going to be in both longitude and within one degree of declination. Um, this conjunction has a correlation on the S&P 500 with very strong multi-day and even multi-week moves. There is a, a pivot one-week orb correlation, but it's really not as reliable as the move correlation. And so really what this tells me is that somewhere around the 17th, and this also, of course, correlates with from the geocentric perspective, our Jupiter-Uranus uh, conjunction. So you know, both also indicating really big moves. Um, I'm going to go ahead and post my chart here for um, the S&P 500 heliocentric Venus conjunction, and you can take a look at that. I'm posting both the weekly and the daily um, because it does play out on both charts. It just kind of depends on what kind of trader you are and what positioning you're looking at. But ultimately, with that one, it's it's the, the tell of this is to make sure that you're in position for the move. So, what I'm seeing for April, basically, is a lot. I'm seeing volatility. I share Gianni's perspective on Bitcoin. I don't think consolidation's over. Um, I do think, though, that when we do see a bottom, I do think that it is absolutely time to load the boat. I think we all agree on that. Um, I think that the first two weeks of April are going to be volatile in the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 as well. And I think that that volatility is then something that we need to be able to position ourselves in for whatever big move is coming um, in the third week and the fourth week of April. So I think, I mean, I have lots of other things I could talk about too. I'm not sure. Donna's how am I doing on time? Oh. Crypto Donna's? I'll just keep talking. Oh. Uh, sorry, yeah, you got a couple. I, I wasn't keeping track exactly, but I'm sure you can do a couple more minutes. Okay, cool. Um, there are some other patterns that I find that are really interesting to track, um, things that you can look at. 
on your charts if you're a, a day trader or a swing trader. Um, tracking the lunar apogee and perigee um, has dis distinct correlations on charts. Um, so the apogee has a tendency to correlate with trading in a tighter range, and it does kind of depend on the instrument that you're looking at. For example, another instrument that I um, chart and track a lot of analysis on is the, is Nifty. Um, so on the Nifty chart, we... Sorry, could you tell us what Nifty is? Oh, yeah, yeah. Nifty is the top 50 companies in India. So from the NSC. Um, and so... In the, yeah, I don't know if there's any any nifty followers here. I have I have a handful of people um, followers and people that I I talk to from India um, that track the nifty. Um, so specifically on the nifty, the lunar apogee is a very reliable two to three day tight range, and then the lunar perigee is a very reliable um, big move. So again. When I'm looking at those from a trader's perspective, I'm looking at how I can position myself to get in before the big move. So I'm looking for the pivot, the entry, and then holding it through the move, essentially. Um, let's see. There was another thing I noticed that I thought was really interesting uh, regarding the solar eclipse that's uh, coming on April 8th, which is that from a heliocentric perspective, um, Jupiter and Uranus, are conjunct, uh, well, they're still conjunct by degree, but they're within, uh, sorry, their declination is conjunct by degree within eight minutes of each other. Um, so that, that definitely kind of adds the element of big, big energy to the eclipse, big moves, um, un sudden and unexpected things. So I think that that eclipse is absolutely going to be a, kind of a wild card, really. Hard to even predict. Um, but it certainly looks like it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. Um, okay, well, I feel complete unless anybody has any thoughts or questions with what I feel like sharing at the moment. Yeah, I mean, that eclipse, that's exactly conjunct Chiron. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and two days later, the ruler, eclipse ruler, Mars, again, it conjunct Saturn. Um, so, and then also, actually, at, on that same day, April 10th, the moon will be conjunct Jupiter Uranus. Um, so, I mean, certainly that period of the first 10 days of April uh, appears to have a signature for some type of crisis, global crisis, political crisis. We don't know what it's going to be. I mean, certainly we have some ideas. Um, the situation in Gaza continues to deteriorate. Unfortunately, it's a tragedy. Um, I mean, obviously the Russian-Ukraine situation has just gotten more complex with the attack on Moscow. I mean, there's a lot of problems that could flare up into something really into a crisis or something else that we haven't thought of yet. Um, so, yeah, uh, now how is that going to affect the financial markets? We don't know. Bitcoin sometimes does well in a crisis. Uh, very hard to say. So, uh, but that we've all flagged the first 10 days of April as a very difficult period that could have some type of a crisis. Um, before we open this up to questions, I'm just going to open it for just real quick here. If the speakers want to ask any of the other speakers a question first, does anybody? No, I just appreciate Margot's heliocentric take. It's, uh, I don't hear much financial astrology with heliocentric, so it's, it's nice. Yeah, totally different perspective. Thanks, Gianni. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's super interesting. I started studying it about last year, and I've just found it to be really, really fascinating. So, uh, yeah, I know sure. Ray. Ray looks at um, heliocentric Mercury going through Sagittarius uh, sometimes, especially for precious metal markets. But um, in in terms of you know other planets, uh, I don't think there's much else um, that I know going on in that space. So no, that was good. Thanks. Absolutely. Anybody else? Okay, hang on a second here. I gotta get back into this. Okay, uh, so we're gonna open this up for questions, but I just want a lot of times on these spaces, like people have these kind of very, very long comments, and then like just if you have like we want you to be concise, you know, if you have a question about what was presented or maybe even something that wasn't presented that you're looking at, certainly bring that to our attention. Technical analysis. 
stocks, commodities, uh, crypto, uh, but try to just have a kind of a concise question that could be easily answered and no long monologues we just ask, please. <laughs> okay, uh, so let me see um, if there's any questions out there. Let me see if I can even figure out how I would know if someone's asking a question. Usually I think there's a request, right? Um, somebody makes a request. Guys, are you seeing any questions? I'm not, no. Okay. I'm sure somebody has a question. Don't be shy. I thought there was one. I thought there. Were, I thought I saw some questions. Uh, oh, okay. Here we go. Okay, one request. Um. All right. So how do I do that? Yes. Uh, hang on a second here. Request. Okay. Um, I'm just going to add him as a speaker temporarily. Okay, Mr. Humphrey. Uh, Humphrey Bogart. What is your question today? <laughs> Well, it wasn't so much a question, but when you guys were talking about uh, Jupiter in uh, Gemini and talking about communication, my thought process was immediately like, oh, like Nostra really hasn't had its day in the sun. So uh, that was just kind of my, uh, my two cents. But I'll, I'll back out now. Thanks. I'm sorry. What was the, what was the comment? What, was, what hasn't had its day in the sun? Nostra. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Is that, like, Jack Dorsey's media? It's, Wait, is that it's Jack the communication Dorsey's blue, No, that's Blue Sky. It's the communication layer they're building on top of Bitcoin. A communicate. Can you, why don't you tell us a little bit more about it? I mean, I have heard about it, but I'm not that familiar with it. Basically, it's this, it works the same as, like, a, like, a Bitcoin wallet. You have pretty much an anonymous address, but instead it's, like, a, it's either an originator uh, or a relay. Um, and basically anything you post is kind of... Um, on the protocol. Um, so it, it enables the ability to make uh, like peer-to-peer -peer transactions and essentially it's like a budding commerce that the internet isn't uh, really privy to yet, but uh, it's it's happening as we speak. Uh, highly recommend everybody go check out uh, getalby, A-L-B-Y uh, dot I-O. Yeah. Okay, thanks for that comment. We appreciate that information. Not a problem. Nostr, check it out. Okay. All right, taking questions here for uh, five or ten minutes. Uh, do we have any other questions out there in X Spaces land? You know, I was going to say something else, Robert, that I uh, had forgotten. Yep. I, I probably would have said it uh, at first if I didn't have to <laughs> restart. But uh, with <laughs> yeah. um, the market's expectations of the Fed, um, Right now, like I said, it, they're they're expecting the Fed to cut in June. Um, I, I neglected to mention right. the the Jupiter Pluto trine. That that's a pretty accommodative uh, signature as well. So I, I'm looking at that as a potential uh, catalyst to actually get the Fed to move. Um, so I just want to throw that out there too because I think it's pretty important. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, certainly, I mean, we think the Fed is going to cut this year. Inflation is really coming under control, and, you know, miraculously, they seem to be uh, heading for the so-called, like, uh, soft landing, the very elusive <laughs> soft landing, uh, but that appear, appears to be what's happening. Uh, GDP is strong, consumer spending is strong, unemployment is low, uh, and the economy is doing well, and inflation is coming under control. So the Fed... Uh, initially botched it, but they do seem to be sort of gaining control of the situation. And I think um, the Fed pivot could could be could be bullish. It depends when it comes. I mean, yeah, or, you know, August is, is definitely July and August is, is definitely when we, we start to get worried. So uh, we've got another gentleman here. Lines, we're gonna I'm um, gonna invite you, add you as a speaker. You should just yeah be able to uh, ask your question. Mines, are you out there? Can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, what's up? Uh, what's your question today, sir? So, I don't, I'm generally kind of into astrology, but I wanted to ask someone, there are typical um, implications with Taurus and Aries, 
And uh, well, I'll just leave it at that for now. Sorry, is your is your question uh, d directed towards any one speaker? No, not necessarily. Just if anyone uh, has this like information uh, from their recent charting. Can you say that again? I didn't. I didn't hear what was the the actual ish question, the subject you were asking. Just what are the typical implications of Aries and Taurus since we're moving into those uh, times of the chart? You mean for this upcoming eclipse yeah, with the, the eclipse in Aries? Bitcoin. Of um the of this eclipse on April eighth. Uh. No, since I know we're entering the time period of Aries now, so I'm wondering if that has historical, typical implications. Mm. I, I think he's well, asking, like, if has his the son in Taurus bullish for Bitcoin or his son in Aries bullish for Bitcoin. I think that's the question. Ah, uh, right, right. Yeah, yeah and so Marsilio has, like, the most data on that. Marsilio's. Can you repeat the question? What data question are you asking? Uh, he's just the sun in Aries. He's just asking about the Aries uh, Aries season, the sun in Aries. How does that... Sun in Aries, basically, without any other considerations, like conjunct a north node or anything like that? I think that was his question, yeah. Yeah, are there some sort okay. of patterns that historically have shown, uh, since I know, you know, obviously the halving has a big effect on the Bitcoin price action. But around those times, I also noticed, just aside from an astrological point of view, that around these times, it's typically good for markets. So I'm wondering if that has to do with uh, Aries or Taurus, Sun, um, or if there are historical patterns that you have noticed or, or tracked. I'm looking at my um, workspace right now, Bitcoin 2015 to current, and um, if I use all markets, Sun and Aries is fine, but kind of middle of the range, actually much better, Libra, Sag, Aquarius. And then if I select for um, bull markets only, it's, it's, it's also, it's similar, Aries is not a standout either way, um, it's kind of middle range, so... Um, it may be, you know, one particular year that you're remembering, or um, you know, maybe there's a down year that's, that is, you're not looking at, but in any case, that's the sun and Aries for Bitcoin data. Um, I would throw in on that. Um, I track uh, heliocentric sign ingresses Hi. and for all the planets. And one thing that I have observed is that pretty much any planet, well, the, let me back that up, any inner planet, um, when it makes an ingress to Aries, it has an effect on the market. Um, and so sometimes even the moon, um, that like positive typically or? so a lot of the work that I do, um, is, is non-directional pivot specific and non-directional move specific. And then you have to be able to read price action, um, to gauge what direction you're going to move in at that time. There are directional biases that you can build, but that's going to be really based on the instrument. And like, for example, like the, take the NASDAQ, uh, like Mars rules the NASDAQ and someone might like disagree with me about that simply because of the, like the rising sign on the geocentric needle chart of the NASDAQ. Um, but it, Mar, it's, it's really cuspy. And so uh, what I've found in all of the work that I do is that Mars is the regulating planet, um, for the NASDAQ. So when, when Mars in, ingresses Aries, like there could be like a particular reaction, but that's, it's kind of like research that you have to do. I guess I was just throwing that in there to kind of let you know that if you track planetary, um, signs and lunar sign ingress into Aries, you will most likely find patterns. Thanks so much All right. for that, guys. Yeah, I mean, just uh, just a general astrological, you know, the sun is exalted in Aries, and that usually represents confidence and expansion. It's the first, you know, Aries, the sun in Aries is always the beginning of spring, and that's the new growth, and the sun is warming up again, and, and uh, you know, it has a positive general connotation to have the sun, the sun in Aries, just astrologically, not necessarily going to mean the financial market's always going to respond well, but that is the general sort of, you know, it's positive, it's a favorable having the sun in Aries. 
Um, okay, is there any other questions out there, folks? We'll take a couple more questions. We are going slightly over our hour uh, our I, hour long. Okay, Humphrey Bogart, you already had your question. Well, it was I'm more a statement, but I, I, I have one for Lana, okay. and it's based on Merriman's uh, report from 2023. Yeah. So he, he outlines uh, or highlights this quite a bit in the report, and it's um, Jupiter through the signs and its effect on the Dow Jones Industrial. Um, yep. I don't really have a more specific question other than what would you foresee? Obviously, we have Jupiter kind of moving through Taurus and into Gemini. Yeah, uh, yeah, no. It looks um, like it, his, it reaches a bottom kind of right before or like somewhere in Leo. Uh, correct, yeah. Jupiter, um, th historically, it's not uncommon to see stocks form significant highs uh, either in late Taurus or in the sign of Gemini. So from a cyclical standpoint, the reason why I mentioned the possibility of a 15 to 25% pullback in stocks this year um, is partially because of that. Uh, we have a four-year cycle coming due in stocks. The last major bottom that we had was obviously in March of 2020. Um, so if you combine that forecast uh, with, you know, I was looking at S&P maybe hitting 5,800, 6,000, a 20%, 25% pullback from that high would essentially take you back to former resistance turn support of the breakout that we just had um, that exceeded that um, January uh, 2022 high. So basically you'd be coming back down to retest former uh, resistance turn support. So I mean, I'm not saying that's how it's going to work out, but in a, in a perfect uh, world where, where cycles and geocosmics align, that, that would be the, uh, the situation that we're looking at. Cool. Thanks for that explanation. Um, all right, guys, I'm not seeing like a, a lot of questions coming in. So uh, unless there's any last questions out there, um, I think we could start wrapping uh, this up and uh, hopefully... Uh, people got some good, useful, you know, actionable information from this uh, event today. And I uh, just want to thank all the speakers for making time uh, to, to do this and to reach out, you know, to the community and, and to just promote, you know, financial astrology um, and, uh, and let people know what, you know, what we're thinking. So, like I said, for me, I do have this webinar event uh, on uh, this Saturday. It's going to be a two to two and a half hour event. We're going to talk about a lot of the same stuff I talked about today, but just much more in depth. Um, some of you guys might know I've got the subscription service on Patreon, and you can find out all my information on uh, www.astrocryptoreport.com. Um, guys, uh, do you have any, um, Marcelia, do you have anything coming up, uh, any events, any subscriptions, any, anything you want to mention? Um, well, I'm posting some daily notes on X, uh, so catch them in the morning in the New York Open, and a YouTube video once a week uh, on Sundays, so YouTube channel link is in the bio, and so that's my schedule right now, but more on the way. Thanks. Cool, cool. Gianni, I know you and Ray probably have some events coming up. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we just announced today uh, to the public that we're having an investment retreat in Slovenia uh, in Europe. Uh, in September. So the details for that oh, wow. uh, can be found at MMACycles.com. Um, so definitely wow. would recommend checking that out because it's going to be a really uh, great event with people uh, from Ooh. all over the world. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. I was in Slovenia last summer and it's one of the most beautiful places. It's a wonderful yeah. uh, place to have an event. Yeah, yeah it's at Lake Bled if you're familiar with it. Um, it's in the Oh, Dina. God. Yeah, that is just a, one of the nicest spots in, probably in yeah. Europe, actually. Yeah, yeah so it's, it'll be good. Uh, Margo, do you have any events coming up, uh, or you want anything you want to talk about? Um, well, I just have, I, right now I have my Patreon, um, where you can access my newsletter and then I make regular weekly, um, updates. Uh, specifically I do a lot of updates for the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 and Nifty throughout the week. So if you're a day trader, that's pretty useful to people. Um, and then I'm also about to launch a website uh, that will offer um, individual readings and um, also just more one-on-one -on -one work um, with me. So that's what I got. Cool, cool. <laughs> cool, cool. 
All right, guys, um, it's been great here, and um, thanks again for everybody uh, joining us. We'll, we'll try to do another one in April, and we'll see where we are then, and um, uh, hopefully this can be kind of an ongoing series. So uh, thanks again, everybody, for joining us. I think we had about 100 listeners today on the live, and then the recording uh, will be available as well, um, and uh, uh, we'll see you guys soon. Everybody have a great week, and uh, let's make the most of these opportunities in this bull market. This is a very unique bull market. A lot of opportunities out there, so go get it, guys. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Robert. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.